Good afternoon, Year 7s. Nice to see you all. I hope you're staying safe and well. Welcome back to another video tutorial uh, on Animal Farm by George Orwell. Uh, this is our fi fifth and final video lesson on George Orwell's Animal Farm, uh, on the introduction to it, rather. So, we're going to be looking at the following, which I put on the screen earlier. I'll just show you again to remind you what we're going to be exploring in this final introduction, introductory lesson. So, to start off with, in previous lessons, we've discussed the historical, political, and social context of the novel. We've also looked at the background of the writer and his intentions. We've discussed the genre uh, of, of dystopia and of allegory, of fable, uh, of parable. We've, we haven't done the following four things, so we're going to look briefly, and it will be quite a brief lesson, on setting, key characters, plot, and some themes. Uh, and I, 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 it will be a brief lesson uh, for you. So let's start with the setting. So the novel is set on a farm known as Manor Farm at the beginning of the novel, run by a drunken, uh, cruel, and oppressive character named, named as Farmer Jones. Uh, so that's what it's called at the beginning of the novel. Later on in the novel, it becomes known as Animal Farm after the revolution that takes place. Manor Farm, as you can see in the, in the image here, is a typical kind of almost quintessential English rural farm. Uh, the farm is uh, in an English county and surrounded by uh, other kind of rural country uh, names of villages nearby and towns that are nearby. So it's very much steeped in rural England, which is important. And I'll give you a couple of reasons why that might be. Firstly, I think Orwell sets his, his novel on a, an English farm because it gives a suggestion to the reader that what happens in the novel and the terrible totalitarian state that is eventually built by Napoleon the pig. What happens in the novel could take place anywhere. That, what, that Russia isn't this far away distant land, that actually this sort of thing could happen in any country. So I think it's about the fact that totalitarianism can happen anywhere. Another reason why he may have chosen a farm is because a farm serves to represent how capitalism works, in that the pigs and the cows and the horses and the goats, etc., would represent the workers, and the capitalists would be Farmer Jones, the farmer who reaps the benefits and the profits from the, from the hard work of the animals. That's the second reason why he may have set it on a farm. Another reason is actually from Orwell himself, and I'll show you a quote on the board that gives you an explanation about why he sets his novel on this rural uh, English farm. So you won't hear my voice again for about a minute whilst I give you time to read the information on the screen from George Orwell. So clearly, in Orwell's own words, the farm is a, is a useful setting and, a, and an apt and relevant setting because he sees it as a place of exploitation. He sees the farms as being a place where, where farmers uh, exploit the animals for, for their own gain. Um, and of course, we have to remember that this novel is, of course, an allegory. And we've talked about how animal farm is actually a symbol of Russia. And if we remember our 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 society and our picture of Russia from previous lessons, we have to remember that just like the animals in Animal Farm, the p people of Russia, pictured for you here, these peasants, spent the, spent the most majority of their lives working on small farms uh, in a self-sufficient way to, to feed their families. Uh, so it's an appropriate place to set the novel given Russia's rural nature, the fact that Russia went from being a very agrarian society to being a totalitarian state in a very short period of time. So it's an appropriate setting for that reason as well. 
So one could argue that Animal Farm serves as a symbolic microcosm. That just means a small version or micro version. Micro always means miniature. So it's a microcosm, a miniature version of a real thing. And the real thing that it's a miniature version of is Russia. Okay, so that's another way of looking at the setting of Animal Farm and what it represents. Uh, you could see, if you were going to take that microcosm, you could see that the farmer, Farmer Jones, would represent the monarchy and Tsar Nicholas II. The pigs who become middle, who become the leaders, would represent the Bolsheviks and the revolutionaries. And the other animals, particularly the horses and the chickens, would represent the workers who do most of the labour. So the chickens, the sheep and the horses would be the workers or the proletariats and the peasants. And it's important to reiterate and remind you that the events that take place in the novel, uh, in terms of the plot, so the events that take place on Manor Farm in the novel, are almost always based on a real life event that took place in Russia. So we have to remember that the setting is being used by Orwell in his fable as a warning about the dangers of such revolutions creating even worse societies than what they replaced. Okay, so we always have to remember that at the back of our head. Okay, so it's time for a checkpoint. Uh, I would like you to pause the video and you've got your prompt on the screen, the setting and its importance. I'd like you to write up a response to that in your own words, summarise your understanding, and I would take at least five to ten minutes to do that. And I'll see you then. Please pause the video. Okay, we're now going to move on. Welcome back. We're now going to move on to the characters of Animal Farm. And the first one, and I'm kind of going to look at them in, in order of significance, uh, and, but also kind of chronological in terms of the characters that are first introduced. So, the first character I'd like to speak about is Farmer Jones, pictured for you on the screen there. Farmer Jones is a drunken, cruel, tyrannical farmer who runs Animal Farm, which used to be, interestingly, a well-run farm, uh, but he, he, he inherited the farm and it's been a ruin ever since he took over. Um, he is a farmer that mistreats his animals. He, he, his animals live in terrible conditions and are often going hungry, uh, and he often uses violence to try and keep them under control. So... Again, this is quite brief, but I would say clearly our character of Farmer Jones is an allegory for Tsar Nicholas II, who I'll show you again just to remind you. So we've talked a lot about Tsar Nicholas II, who was, of course, the Tsar who had to abdicate, had to give up the throne uh, after the revolution. Uh, he, is seen as a, he was perceived as a weak leader, as incompetent, as oppressive, and Farmer Jones is clearly modelled on Tsar Nicholas II. And you could say that he's a, he serves as a warning to the reader about the consequences of weak and ineffective leadership in a, to a certain extent. The second key character I'd like to discuss again briefly is the character of Old Major. Old Major is on the left hand side of the screen. He's the pig delivering a speech and, who, and he delivers a speech at the beginning of the story. Old Major is again uh, obviously an animal on the farm. He is a very significant figure because he delivers a speech at the beginning of the novel which inspires the animals to rebel against Farmer Jones eventually. He actually dies before the rebellion takes place. But Old Major is essentially an inspirational character who receives a vision of a better society, a, a vision of a society that's fairer, a society in which the animals are no longer uh, oppressed by their leaders and they actually have uh, the ability to run the farm themselves. Which, If you go back to my lesson or think about back to my lesson about the factory in Manchester and the idea of communism being the idea that the people, the workers, own the factory. It very much represents that. So the farm, the means of production is the farm and the farm is eventually controlled by the workers. That's the dream that old Major has. And he describes his dreams to the animals and comes up with a kind of anthem for them, uh, which I think is based on the idea of the communist manifesto. And he then dies. So I would say that based on his radical ideas based on the fact that he's a revolutionary, based on the fact that he's a visionary, I would argue that he's a mixture of two different characters, Old, old Major, in terms of the allegory. The first character I would say he's an he's a allegory for would be Karl Marx, who we talked about last lesson. And I'll put a picture of him now. So Marx was the philosopher who um, revolutionised the world by revealing his idea of communism, of, of, of a rebellion in which the workers of the world unite and overthrow the capitalists ruling classes and I think just as uh, Old Major dies before the rebellion takes place so too did Karl Marx die before the Russian Revolution so I think there's a 
there's definitely a strong argument to be made that Old Major represents Karl Marx uh, and his role in founding communism and in spreading those ideas around the world. However, I think it's also safe to say that he is modelled on Vladimir Lenin, the, the revolutionary who was really largely responsible and, and oversaw the Bolshevik revolution uh, and actually died shortly afterwards. So I think there's a mixture of two different allegorical, two, two different figures in this allegory. One is Karl Marx, the other is the revolutionary Vladimir Lenin, the leader of the Bolsheviks and the, you know, the, fir the first, uh, the, the, the man who oversaw the initial parts of the Russian revolution. And the final character I'd like to talk about, and to be clear, we will discuss other characters as we meet them in the novel. Uh, so don't worry if you think this is this is it. We will be focusing on characters a lot as we as we read through. But the final character I'd like to discuss is Napoleon. He's one of the pigs who is initially not such a major character, but becomes a major character after the revolution. And already you might be thinking, hmm, with a name like Napoleon, I can already imagine who this character is based on. Napoleon is violent. He's a brute. He's ruthless. Uh, he's quite thuggish. Uh, he he uh, does several things in the novel that are just seen that are quite yobbish and thuggish. Uh, but he's also quite politically clever. He's quite shrewd and he's very very cunning. And he's clearly based on the historical figure of Joseph Stalin, who I've, I won't show you a picture again, but we've seen him multiple times now. He is the man who took over as leader of the Communist Party after the death of Lenin. And he is the man who essentially turned this revolution into a nightmare. This possible utopia became a dystopia under Joseph Stalin. So look out for Napoleon at the, in the early stages of the novel when he's not so obviously an important character. So that's the characters we'll, we'll talk about for today. We will talk about other characters as we encounter them. There are some other very important characters that I haven't talked about today, but we will discuss some other key characters later on. Let's have another checkpoint, though, before we move on. So here are your four characters, uh, sorry, four characters. Here are your three characters I'd like you to summarise your understanding of, uh, and I would suggest pausing the video for at least ten minutes. See you soon. Welcome back. So on your screen I've got a list of some of the key themes. I suggest you just jot down, and I'll give you some time to do that later on. Uh, I'm not going to talk about all of them, but I'm going to talk about a few that, kind of mix, uh, that are kind of interrelated. So the key themes in Animal Farm I've already talked about are the idea of power and leadership and corruption. So the idea that uh, power corrupts those who have it, uh, particularly those who don't have uh, a sense of morality. So in this novel, the pigs very quickly turn this utopian society into a dystopia, turn it into a nightmare society because of their greed and their and their um, their longing for power. And the fact that eventually Animal Farm goes from being a society based on equality to one of gross inequality uh, is really important as we track the novel. The pigs initially. Uh, allow, the, allow the other animals to have a sense of equality, a sense of justice, a sense of fairness, but those things soon disappear as the pigs grab power, especially obviously Napoleon, the dictator. Lies and deceit are very important because the pigs will start, you'll notice this as we read the novel, they'll start to drip in information to the animals and they'll use information to uh, maintain their grip on power and to consolidate their power uh, and they'll spread misinformation in order to quash any rebellion as well and we'll keep an eye on that as we go through. And lastly I'm going to talk about violence and the fact that violence is used initially by Farmer Jones to control the animals and then after the re rebellion which was supposed to have uh, ridden this, the, the farm of violent leaders, after the rebellion the pigs eventually use violence as well to control people. So violence and totalitarianism are quite linked. And obviously totalitarianism is a key theme which is not on the screen there, but it's a very important theme because that's what Orwell is writing about uh, and criticising. So uh, I'm not going to get you to checkpoint on themes because we're going to come over these themes as we meet them. 
in the novel and we'll go into far more depth than I've just done. I'm also not going to go over with the plotting a great deal because I don't want to you know, ruin it completely for you besides the fact that you know that this novel is based on what happens in Russia so you can kind of make some inferences about what happens to the, to the farm after the animals rebel. So that concludes our five-part introduction to Animal Farm by George Orwell. I hope you now feel you have a much stronger uh, understanding of the novel's background before we go on to reading chapter by chapter. Um, please now go on to complete your independent task and your quizzes on Show My Homework and I'll see you next time when we'll start to look at Animal Farm chapter one. Stay safe and stay well. See you next time.